Alright, so we got an extra special one. Oh my god, I can't believe this. Going to sea, on the road right now, down in Miami. A little scheduling conflict type thing. It's on a Thursday. Regardless, it's Hellraiser 3 on the big screen. And, ha ha ha, the reason you're here, we're doing a recording of the Q&A session with director Anthony Hickox afterwards. My boys at Popcorn Frights hooked this up. They are madmen. I gotta give them all props in the world. They keep setting up these awesome, awesome screenings, and then they get these wild and, and outrageous Q and A's afterwards. They're the guys that did the found footage 3D. They put on the Popcorn Frights Film Festival every year. There's links to those videos in the descriptions. Check those out. Definitely hit up that festival if you're anywhere near South My uh, Florida at that time. So um, Hellraiser 3 was the first film that you did that you did it right. Um, you directed it, but uh, yeah, Pete Atkins. But Pete Atkins wrote it. Um, how did it, you come about getting the job to do Hellraiser 3? That's a very great story, I have to say. On Waxwork, there was a guy who insured movies in 1985. With this little guy who insured all movies. He right. wanted his medical insurance, so he was an actor. You get medical insurance when you're an actor. So he was in. Waxwork. Cool. What's his name? I can't remember his name. What did? What part did he play in Waxwork? He played the teacher. All right. The Nazi teacher. Okay. Okay. So at 3 a.m. some random night, I get a call from him. He's at a bar with this guy who owns the rights to Hellraiser. And he's like, "Would you like to do Hellraiser 3? I'm like, "Fuck yes." <laughs> I would love to do Hellraiser because I'm a huge fan. And that's how it happened. You know, Hellraiser, you know, was the first two films were UK based. They were, yeah. they were they're English films. Hellraiser 3 brings it into the US. It's set, it's set in New York, so of course it was filmed in North Carolina. Oh, yeah. Obviously. With, with glass mats. With glass mats. No, with uh, with right the right windows. Right? Uh, the windows, right? Yeah, all glass mats. Um, I noticed you used the glass mats in. Um, uh, Warlock the Armageddon in in the apartment yeah, in the apartment yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so when you were when you were working on Hellraiser three what what was your overall experience what was it like working with Doug Bradley amazing amazing I love that I'm really upset he's not you know they replaced him in the new Hellraiser yeah. Yeah. they replaced right. him in the last one and then uh, someone else is playing in the next yeah. one. Um, Let's let's give uh, let's give Omar a chance to ask a question. Okay. okay. Well, uh, I was gonna ask about Doug because I met him at a very nice. Um, and he's such a cool guy. He is cool. Guy. And I love the fact that in this movie I got to get him seeing him. Cause he's actually a general guy. He's actually the general one of the. Well, yeah. He's a, he's the 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 the, so the, the, the military guy. guy you know. Yeah. So. Um, I was kind of curious about the special effects early in the film. He's like a statue. How how did that go? How did did he go and make up into that, or he just kind of walk into the statue? Did you hear the fart? Yeah. You heard the fart. Uh -huh. Yeah. There is a fart in there. There's a fart. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. In the statue. And they left it in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the the statue fart. No, no, there was a statue fart. Flying the fart. But it was really weird because they said you have to have Pinhead in the statue. Which is so difficult as a director to make that scary and powerful. Maybe it is. I'm so drunk. I've been out since like six. But, up. But, but anyway, but it was really difficult with the statue to make him scary for that first 30 minutes. I was like, how am I going to do this? It's like, he's a guy standing in a yeah, statue. statue. <laughs> and he's not attacking anybody, so he's not scary. I, I actually think some of the film's best scenes take place with him in the statue. I, when, especially when he brings the girl, like the first, his first victim, right. rips off the skin. I mean, I think that's a great sequence. Um, and that was based on the car commercial that was a Volkswagen. Uh, when they took the when they took the skin the, the yeah, color the off the, the, the yeah. Volkswagen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, he brought up, uh, Omar brought up special effects. Uh, what I found was a very notable thing about Hellraiser 3 is, uh, and many of you may not know this, uh, it's still in the early days of CGI. Hellraiser 3 is the first horror movie to actually use CGI. Okay. That's you know, true. That's 
No, it, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, true. there were there were non horror films that you see GI like uh, like Terminator Two and The Abyss, but um, and of course Tron and things like that. But uh, Hellraiser Three is the first movie to incorporate CGI. How how, how did that come about uh, with the, the CGI? That was actually wine, the Weinstein's, which we hate because they control our movies. And shit. <laughs> but they actually said we have we seen the Michael Jackson video where he was changing faces. Right. Yes. And like, we need to incorporate this. I was like, okay, cool. That's <laughs> you know, speaking of faces, I'm really terrible at names, but I'm really good with faces, and I never noticed until tonight. You were in the uh, flashback sequence in Vietnam, yeah, standing, over, standing over her body with the right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a quick when they're when you switch into cha uh, tan uh, channels. You see interview with Anthony Hickox. You have a yeah. quick. Uh, <laughs> actually, and I, and I never noticed that until I watched it tonight. Um, you uh, do you have a, a, like one experience um, from working on Hellraiser three that stands out more than anything? Like one thing that's most memorable and your experience on set. Okay, I was nearly fired the first week. <laughs> <laughs> I was because they like employed me because I did wax work and then they without the roof, remember? Yeah. yeah. And so they called after two days of dailies. I got a call from the studio, Merrimack, actually, who was a Larry Motto. And they were like, they're going to fire you. <laughs> they think it's shit. And I was like, what the fuck? They were like, no, it's shit. I was like, I'm going to cut it together and they will understand. So I cut this little scene together, uh -huh. the first one with her in the hospital, and they were like, okay. <laughs> but, but what's funny is you took, you took the thing. But the, uh, you laugh at that, but it really happened. But the next <laughs> film, uh, my, what my understanding is they almost fought, they wanted to fire the director of Hellraiser Bloodline and have you come in and, and fix the film, right? Yeah, because this was good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hellraiser 3 is a fun movie. Um, it's more than fun, it's deep. There's a lot of deep going on. There's a lot of deep. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, people are doing that. Did they give you a problem with the religion at the end? And yeah, of course it did. They gave well, me a little shit about Cl doing... No, Clyde Barker came out and said, you fucking destroyed Hellraiser, because they brought God into it. And I'm not a religious guy, mm -hmm. but I thought if Pinhead is evil, there is a good side to... Yeah, why not? Because yeah. he's always he's always from hell and stuff. So he loves me. <laughs> I was sober when I saw him. This guy, this guy's awesome though. So let's give the audience a, a chance to ask some questions. Yeah, this man I'm right here. You know. right. Uh, stand, what's your name? Eric. Eric, stand up, Eric. Okay. Hey. 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 Pro hey. Project yourself. Okay. Hi. Hello. Um, so the visual style of this movie was crazy. There were like lots of split diopter shots and d big dollies. Okay, and, come. Okay. Yeah. I know where he's going, by the way. I was just wondering when uh, when does the idea come to film something unconventionally? Like, is that all in pre-production, or do you improvise on set? What's the deal? <laughs> That is a good question. Your friend, your friend won the storyboards. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that wasn't. That's in there, that's not in there. You know what was about this movie, which I've never done before? I, because blocking, movies are blocking. You have actors, you have camera, and you have to like build tension within, I think, within every scene, like catch up. And I actually planned this one out. I, I wouldn't fly because I hated flying. There's yeah. a train from LA to New York. And on that, I storyboarded it every moment. I, well, I, I did like a sky version of where the actors would be in every scene, which they kind of are in this thing. So there's nothing accidental. It was like my plan. The actors hated it because they were like, what the fuck? I have to like go there and say a line? I was like, yeah. Go there and say the line. And they were like, what? After a while, they kind of got into it. So this was very planned. I don't necessarily agree that this is a great way to make movies, but it kind of worked. When I was watching this, it worked. The emotion and the actors gone into it. And I feel, I feel the, the visual style sets it apart. You know, it gives the film a more original look. You know, um, I, I, I like uh, 
great camera angles. There's a, there's a film Amazing. that there's a there's a film that came out um, this, or, or, uh, last year called Don't Breathe, which is a it's great a great, a great yeah, horror thriller. Yeah. And Fede Alvarez, who directed it, who also directed the, the remake of Evil Dead, just fantastic. Uh, which, by the way, Evil Dead. I mean, the original, even, come on. Well, I, I love the original, but I also enjoy the remake. I think, you know, I think uh, I, <laughs> we can agree to disagree. No, because, <laughs> but Dawn of the Dead, which I never thought they could remake, yeah. they yes. remade really well. Well, Zack Snyder. <laughs> <laughs> Zack Snyder is probably one of his best films, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great movie. But, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, we got uh -huh. Did I answer your really? question? Huh? What? Your question. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, you, you take care of mine. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, just had a question. Uh, you were talking about the actors. Um, the main prick, I mean, Rico Suave. JP. Was he somebody that you chose for the role, or did he just. It's funny because he's actually a big writer now. Really is. is he? Yeah. JP Monroe, the one that we did, JP yeah, Monroe? Man, the right. big writer. No. He was like the producer's best friend. <laughs> 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 this is why you have to do. You have to do this shit. Uh, and he wasn't bad because I played on his dick. <laughs> but he was, uh, he was given to me, and he was a dick, but a nice dick. I have to say, he's actually a nice guy. He was a solid dick. He was a solid dick. <laughs> you knew, you knew what to do with him. You, you ran with his. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, like you had to play on what you're given. So the producers were like, "This is a guy." I was like, "Okay." We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna give uh, one more audience member a chance to answer. I will give two. So ah, two we're gonna give, this give you and then this young lady over there. Okay. Oh, well, uh, I'm Chad. Uh, my friend here. We basically been watching this series, especially hours of three in particular, since we were like what, 15? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, obviously, thank you very much. It's uh, been a whole lot. In fact, it almost disturbed our parents that we watched it so much. Uh, <laughs> um, but. Uh, um, my question is basically, what was it when you deviated? Obviously, the, the Hellraiser one and two is this deviates a bit. You, you hit it as giving free reign essentially. Was that your idea to come up with it, or did someone like how did you run with that? I don't. You know what? It's true because I don't know because I loved one and two. Two I really loved in a yeah. weird fucked up. I think two is a better film than the first film. Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah. And so I loved it, and Tony Randall was going to direct this, and they fired it. So that's when I got the call at 3 a.m. <laughs> they were like, we fired Tony Randall, and we had this one. And I was like, because I was such a huge fan of the first two, that was a very difficult thing to take on. I'm not saying this in a weird, pretentious way, but it was. It was like a difficult thing. And I was like doing American movies. I'm English, but I'm doing I loved American like takes on movies, and I was like, I'm gonna do an American take on Hellraiser, which is this rock and roll, okay. crazy take, and people didn't like it. I mean, I got killed. I got fans like threatening to shoot me. <laughs> uh, but well, well, I just did it. Well, Pinhead was never like if you look at the first couple of films, Pinhead was never meant to be a central character. He was never meant to be a, a main thing. It just he happened to wind up becoming the face. So of course, we are Max Dimension Films is going to want to capitalize on that and bring and it forward. Also, it was like I'd seen uh, Freddy's, Jason's. I was like, Pinhead needs to be that guy. Yeah, that had smart, Pinhead. stupid yeah. answers and like. He and need, he a lot of Hellraiser fans didn't like that. He needs to be the Leprechaun. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, what's your, what, uh, this could be the final question. What's your name? Uh, it's Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Um, it's actually two parter. <laughs> First question is, the dynamic of Joey and Terry's relationship, it almost seems like it can go in either direction of kind of like, could be romantic, or could be more of a savior, big sister, little sister dynamic. It, um, I, know. I kind of half heard that. <laughs> I, I, I actually agree with hers. Her, Where is it going? It's, it's a very... It's very a, a re, almost like a relationship between the two girls. Yeah, there was something and there. It was almost like a dependency, looking up to you. And, and that's what I loved her. about it was I had two females that like had this relationship, 
It wasn't the usual, like, you know, in every movie, you have a guy and a girl, and I had two girls that I had this relationship. And you worked with one of them on uh, Warlock Armageddon. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And a few, few other, and Full Eclipse. Yes. I love Full Eclipse. I, I love that love movie. <laughs> He's a werewolf fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> horrible fucking werewolf. <laughs> but, but you're right. And that was so interesting to have, like, two females. They're very like, yeah, one's more good and one's yeah. on the bad side, but, but is she but they bad? Come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then if, if they are or not, but and the costume designer who was brilliant on this died of AIDS. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's actually brilliant. Then he probably because her costumes were so cool, and the other one with the like the straight gray and the black and and her makeup both. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was a two-parter. Sorry. Okay, another one. Why weren't the Cenobites from the first two in the third one? Um, I, I could probably take this one. <laughs> she, she, she wanted to know why the Cenobites for the first two were uh, from the first two films weren't in this one. Because and these weren't Cenobites. He created his own. Like he was out of hell now. So and he was, now he was me the other day, right? What? I, me so me someone asked you that, but yeah. I was listening. Because. He's released from hell in this one, so he created his own little weird smoking. I like the Harley guy with the piston yeah. going in his head. That was a fucking difficult thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> I said to the makeup guy, I was like, I need pistons going in and out of his head like a fuck. He's being fucked in his head. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, what? I was like, no. <laughs> you need to figure that out. <laughs> it's great. And, yeah. and it, it looks terrific. Yeah. I was like, he's fucking his brain. Like, well, and then I was like, on the other one, I was like, I need her smoking through her throat. And they were like, what? <laughs> so they were his own creation. They weren't like Hell's creation. Hell, he was released and he had his own little He army. had to make his own army. Yeah. Like a, a, bar, a, bar kind of cool. a bartender, a DJ, and a, uh, and a cameraman. And, and CD. And it, yeah, well, he was the DJ, the CD. Yeah, the DJ. And by the way, that guy is actually one of the biggest DJs in the world. Yeah. We we want to um, we want we're gonna it's a late night, so we want to let everyone go home. We want to thank Anthony for coming out, coming all the way to Miami and uh, doing this Q&A. Thank you for this was this was your first time hosting a retrospective screening of Hellraiser three, and I've done waxwork many times. You, uh, yeah, I know you told me, but Hellraiser three, man, uh, I love waxwork and I love Hellraiser three, but we got the first Hellraiser three retro screening with you. And I love him. He said, <laughs> yes, "Well, you should." Can we get waxwork? <laughs> we will eventually do waxwork. We yeah. love waxwork. And we're gonna end on waxwork. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. Thank you, Anthony. All right, so that's it. Uh, another. Awesome, awesome, awesome uh, screening from Popcorn Frights. Love you guys, love you guys, love you guys. Special uh, thanks to Anthony Hickox. It was great getting to know you, great getting your insight. I absolutely loved uh, some of the stories that you told, uh, both you know on and off camera. Uh, I, I can't say enough. Uh, I also, you know, am driving, so I probably shouldn't say anything at all, uh, except again, uh, wonderful time, wonderful evening, Hellraiser 3, totally amazing, absolutely loved it, popcorn frights, thank you guys so much, so much, so much, and that's going to be it from uh, Miami, Florida.